I'm Nicola Talent and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts. So that is um, an extraordinary and dramatic developments. Pull in your mic there. Um, down in Cork over the past few days and particularly just before we came into the studio um, news has broken that there is what is suspected of perhaps being human remains have been discovered at a property um, by members of the Gardaí. Yeah, so I mean obviously they've they've found something that they believe and they they clearly do believe it is human remains um, it's not a, a an accidental find they were obviously in there since earlier on in the week looking for these remains and they've now been uncovered Shortly after they were discovered, uh, a man was a man in his fifties was rearrested, and that man was had been arrested on uh, earlier this week, held for questioning, and then released without charge with a file being prepared for the DPP. But obviously, uh, the discovery of these remains um, has has pushed it forward, and he has been rearrested in in County Cork again today. Now, Tina Satchwell was missing since twenty seventeen, and we'll get back to the details around who she was and what happened in a minute. But before we do, to talk about the discovery of suspected human remains, um, there's this kind of actually quite developed science. It's a kind of a geoscience. And it's if a discovery is made of something that looks like a, a human remains, and obviously they know fairly quickly if it yeah. is or it isn't. I mean, yeah. this is unlikely to be an animal that that is fairly evident yeah. um, when it is. But what they bring in is this X-ray equipment. And they sort of x-ray the ground and they're able to see under the ground. It's really quite detailed. I, myself and Donald McIntyre actually used it on a couple of cases yeah. we were working on a few years ago. The case in, in Dawkey, um, the allegations that a baby had been born and been buried in a garden there. And also on an investigation we we're working on in relation to the disappearance of Mary Boyle in Donegal. And private companies... Um, run this service. So basically, if you want to see if there's been a disturbance under the ground, yeah. you bring in this sort of x-ray equipment. It, it goes over the ground and you can see down like a metre or two. Yeah. And you can see the ground kind of has has layers. So basically, if you dug something up, if you dug a grave, for example, and you filled it in, you'd be able to see that the grave had been dug. It's not as if it just completely covers no. up and, and it hides. Every mark made under the ground remains. Yeah. It's almost like a fingerprint of what's happened. And of course they're doing it now in, in with the mother and baby home excavations. Yeah. They're using something similar to, to penetrate the ground and see when something was buried. In the case of Tina Satchwell, there certainly it seems to be excavation going on in a garden, a garden area, but there also seems to be significant uh, excavations within the house as well. This is what we're hearing. Um, that you know that that ceilings and yeah. and and ceilings and 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 floorboards have been uh, also part of that investigation. So it's not solely in 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 the ground. Um, obviously, they, if if they have discovered what they believe to be human remains, what what starts, I suppose, with a dig. Yeah. Um, we know there was a digger used, and yeah. more than likely that is to break up some solid concrete. Yeah. But once they get down to the earth and they believe they know where yeah. some of the bones are, that nearly turns into like an archaeological dig. Yeah. They will be sweeping the soil. They'll be trying to preserve the bones as as well as they can. If they are human bones, and if it is tragic. Tina Satchwell that has lain in this place um, for however long, uh, they'll be wanting to remove them in a very forensic way so as they'll be able to examine them later to see what yeah, the cause still, of death exactly. was, etc. Mean, the cause of death is a hugely important thing for a murder trial. Um, obviously, in the, the the famous case of Elaine O'Hara and Graham Dwyer, the, the cause of death became a huge part of that trial because there were skeletal remains and the passage of time meant that was a, a difficult thing to show. The first port of call I'd say in the Tina Satchwell will be to determine, of course, that if these are human remains, that they are her. Mm -hmm. At times, all over the country, actually, every every week you hear of historical things being uncovered as people 
you know, maybe yeah. renovate homes and all. So they that that would be the first port of call to 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 rule that out that this isn't some historical exactly. Remains, and you know? look, coincidences can happen. The fact of the matter is, um, you know, Gardy working on some class of intelligence, yeah, um, relaunched as such this or certainly launched a murder inquiry this week and moved this from a, a, a missing person inquiry to a murder inquiry. They searched a specific area yeah. um, because of the intelligence yeah. they were given and they have now discovered human remains. So, you know, the yeah, likelihood of this probably being uh, other human remains, if they if they are actually yeah. human remains, the likelihood is... Yeah, it's one in a million chance. Yeah. I mean, what happened was, look, T- Tina Satchwell went missing and, you know, there obviously there was... I think in 2017 she went missing. 2017 she went missing, but there was a dig, I think, a couple of years ago, maybe in 2018. They obviously had some information and they dug a, a wooded area and didn't find anything. Yeah. But then, obviously, they're, they're, presumably the guards are working hard in the background, no doubt that they are. But some there is some major development this week. Yeah. This seems to be driven by intelligence. You know, there's only a couple of types of intelligence. It's really human intelligence or, you know, possibly electronic intelligence. But they obviously um, regarded it as being very, very significant to go in and arrest somebody and to undertake what is quite a public uh, operation, really, in yeah. terms of the 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 excavation you know it's 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 you know people are it's visible to the public let's put it that way um so they 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 clearly had a very strong line of inquiry to say the least she remained a missing person from March 2017 until uh, was it Tuesday yeah or or Monday sorry maybe yeah. that that it was upgraded to a murder inquiry um so they knew something and it seems yeah. to have come to fruition for sure. And usually in cases like this where they target a specific area and before they did search these woods, I recall that, I think yeah. we were down there at the time. And I think they searched the sea in, in parts of along the coast. Yola, of course, is a seaside town. Yeah. Um, and where Tina Satchwell was living, I think she had spent a lot of time in England and she'd come back to, for Moy was her home place. Yola yeah. isn't too far away from it. And from from memory, and I was down there at the time, herself and her husband were living in this sort of terraced yeah. home, which was, you know, pretty much down by the, the seashore. Yeah. Um, she was somebody who had, they had, a, they were quiet, a quiet couple. Yeah. Um, they were seen as being a very together couple. Yeah. And she had a little dog called Ruby that she was very, very attached to. Um, she also used to buy a lot of clothing I yeah. think in second-hand shops or, you know, on these sort of Depop or whatever the, the site was at the time. And she collected it almost to an extent. It felt like hoarding went on in the yeah. house. There was some sort of that going on. Um, I think initially when the report was made to the Guardi that she'd gone missing, it was by her husband who said that he had gone out and done a message and basically returned to the house and she'd gone missing. Yeah, and so it was. he reported it ultimately about four days later to the guard. Gardy after since she she was last seen at that point. Um, you know, he he, you know, part of the Garda investigation uncovered that her, her, you know, she um had left her mobile phone behind. Um she left the little dog Ruby. Left the dog Ruby. Mm. And um I don't think they I think her passport was still there as well. It was found. Um her husband at the time uh, said she may have had uh, uh Richard cash. Satchwell. Richard Satchwell may said she might have had um, some cash available. I think twenty thousand was mentioned at the time that they were supposed to have made. I think from the yeah. buying and selling of these secondhand exactly. clothes. Exactly. So she, he, he, he felt that she might have had access to money and therefore may have, uh, you know, decided to leave. Uh, you know, and that 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 was his belief that 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 she was still alive. He did a series of interviews in the aftermath of her disappearance and I think he sort of suggested that he believed she was gone to see family in Fermoy yeah. and that it was kind of almost normal for her to go and yeah. see family and maybe not say. Yeah. Um he said they were happy. They had some troubles in their relationship yeah. as most couples do, but they they were happy and there was no he had no major cause for concern in the immediate aftermath of her disappearance. She oh. he thought she had just gone off to take a break or to visit people. Yeah, exactly. And um, she was very close to members of her family. Her sister has spoken as well. 
Um, Richard Satchwell was was not from that area. He's from the East Midlands in England. They'd met, I think, when she was a teenager and had lived over there for a while and they'd moved over here. But obviously um, the fact that she had left maybe her dog and her and, and you know, other things sparked in a, uh, an extensive inquiry from and yeah. um, You know, it was obviously classed as a missing persons uh, case, but there was still um, enough that that there were concerns for her her well-being and um, the guards <clears throat> you know had a really really long running uh, investigation i think there was hundreds of hours of cctv you know you you talked about them looking at the coasts i think they did look for in case there was you know something that you know she had gone into the sea on uh, on her uh, as they a, had gone around the town as well um because we were down there in the aftermath and went in and out of a couple of the shops there was a quite a bit of cctv i remember yeah. in the area that some of the business people had that weren't working it was just sort of i suppose a security show yeah um so but there was obviously cctv as well all around the town and that she yeah. hadn't been spotted anywhere no her route was never established how she had gone or how she had got herself from, as he believed, from Yol to Fermoy. Yeah. There was no car missing. No, and there was a lot of checks done on the ferry ports and on airports in case she had left the country. But obviously uh, that didn't yield any any particular evidence that we know of. It may have yielded something. So it really looked like one of these cases that was going to remain a mystery. And there's been huge interest in it yeah. over the years. Um, for it was sure. like she'd vanished into thin air, wasn't it? It was, it was. one of those cases that there was no explanation. And I think and, and, and Richard I, Satchel did a number of interviews himself and he posed for photographs. And he did a lot of the sort of appeals for information himself at the beginning. At one point, he admitted that he had been seen as a suspect in the case, but then said that he didn't believe he was a suspect any no, longer. No, and he, he spoke about how he'd spoken to Gardy openly and, and frankly, you know. Um, so, but obviously then there's big developments this week and it looks like very tragic developments, um, certainly for um, uh, Tina's family who who also kept uh, the light, you know, kept it in the public eye and continued to appeal for, for information. So, I mean, it must be a, a tough day for them, though, in and another, now they wait because, you know, they will have to wait to see are those remains identified as her. There will be DNA testing. Yeah, which and, typically takes up to a week or a yeah. long, couple of weeks, could be even longer. To, so though some cases obviously are are rushed through a bit quicker. Um, so, I mean, it's at the moment the state pathologist Mar uh, Margaret Bolster was there. So that'll begin that investigation. They will take samples of 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 um from the the remains that are discovered they may well have samples already on file or take f uh, samples from uh, Tina's blood relatives uh, to try and do a match um they've obviously then as you said they're going to have to you know preserve the crime scene discover if a cause of death could be found for these remains um they seem to have done extensive uh, um uh, work within the house. I mean, I think the ceilings have been extensively searched. The floorboards this the taken up. This is the property. Heard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it'll. You know, the it, thing is about like missing people, and there's so many of them. But yeah. um, particular cases stand out, like say Deirdre Jacob, yeah. who went missing, and that was upgraded to a murder inquiry. Uh, vanished literally into thin air. The problem is that for officers. Everybody probably realises these people are dead and gone. Tragic circumstances that we know nothing of. Yeah. A lot of them are suspected. There is a, a sort of a murder suspect in the yeah. background, even though um, there's no body found. And that is the problem. Yeah. There's no body and there's no crime scene. No. Which means that there'll always be a defence for somebody, even if they are. And there have been cases that people have been put on trial without a body. Yeah. And one in particular collapsed. Yes. Um, before it really got underway um, involving Sandra Collins, the disappearance of Sandra Collins down in Mayo. Her body was never found and uh, somebody was put on trial and the judge ordered that the trial basically be, you know, he be acquitted yeah. because there wasn't the no, evidence. I mean, it causes so much problems for Gardy, who yet they're looking at the case and they're looking at somebody, the likes of Tina Satchwell, last seen in March 2017. There isn't a bank card used. There isn't a sighting of her. She has no passport. Where could she possibly be gone? There's very little they can do to move an investigation forward when they've no crime scene to an analyse. They have no 
essentially last movements because no. when you have a murder case, if you have a body and a murder, you're working backwards the last 24 hours before that individual ends up dead in a particular place. And you have a geography to go back 24 hours on when you have a crime scene. But without that, you're kind of really... Yeah, I mean, if you look at uh, the Noel Long case, which was covered extensively, obviously, on, on Crime World, I mean, part of what they had to go through to prove that case was they obviously had a, had the body of the victim, but they had to then try and prove that the the, the, the remains had, been, had lain there for a period of time. And a good chunk of that case was, even though they had a body, was to prove that this woman had died as a result of a violent death. Mm. So if you can imagine the difficulty that you would face uh, without even a body there to yeah. to 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 show that this person died, I think there has been one case in the history of the Irish state where somebody was convicted without a body being found. But I mean, they're they're few and far between. So you'd have to look. The guards, you would imagine, would be looking at this and thinking um, that they obviously have intelligence that has led them to this, and that they will be looking at this and thinking that this is a case that can be built for the family as well. Um, when, when people go missing, I mean, the world, there's been a load of cases across the world. I'm thinking of, of the case of say Natasha Kapushk is, was it in, 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 in uh, Austria where somebody went missing for 15 years and was found. And those sort of really, really strange and unusual cases, but, leave families in limbo don't they when somebody goes missing totally yeah where they 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 really believe the person has been killed but they hold out this even if it's a one percent hope yeah that that person can be found and is alive and so it can be a mixed thing i suppose losing hope must feel disloyal to that person if 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 they are do you know i mean if you can imagine if it was one of your own loved ones and and really there was no evidence for you that they were you, you would have to hold out hope that yeah, you'd hold out hope and there's always that tiny possibility, but it really leaves families in limbo. Mm-hmm. So, and sometimes when when bodies are discovered after a long period of time, it's, it, they, they, you know, it's a mixed thing for them where, you know, at least they know now. Yeah, you know, closure. But, but, but also then they have to have that final acceptance, even though they may already have a, a large acceptance that the person is likely dead. Well, getting back to this case in Cork and I suppose trying to, give a bit of a timeline yeah. going forward. The first thing that will have to be done is that scene is going to be preserved and an excavation, uh, as I said, almost like an archaeological excavation will have to be done uh, in retrieving if that is human remains from the site. Yes. Um, DNA testing will have to be done to establish if it is human remains, if it if it is indeed Tina Satchwell. Yeah. Um, and that, if that is the case, that brings the Gardaí to a whole new it is. investigation. There, I mean, a breakthrough wouldn't even go yeah. halfway to describing what it would. No, and the man, a man has been rearrested. A man in his fifties. So, um, how long can he be held now? Well, I mean, it's typically twenty four hours. So, so they're going to want to. Well, they'll have to get as much of that done. I well, mean, probably some of the D, probably some of the DNA can be checked the quickest as opposed to the removal of the remains from the crime scene. You'd imagine you'd be able to use a small amount of. Yeah, well, obviously this man, they have uncovered new evidence to police, so they will put this new evidence formally under under caution uh, to the individual that's arrested and um, give him an opportunity to to to, you know, give an answer to questions that they put to him. Um, it's quite rare that people are released and rearrested yeah. pretty quickly. Uh, it's not unheard of, obviously. Um, but you can't just keep arresting a suspect again and again. You have to have something new. To, if you like, Guards can arrest somebody a number of times for murders, but really they don't get endless bites of it. It just becomes harassment and it really challenges a trial. Um, so... But if they have new evidence, they can rearrest them, which they clearly believe that they have in this case. That will be put to them. And then uh, if there's no admissions or even if there is any admissions, yeah. um, a file will go to the DPP and it'll be dealt with quickly. And um, when if they consider a murder charge, the DPP will look at it and think there's enough now. Um, or at else- times they will, you know, 
place a holding charge on an individual yeah. that they believe uh, to be a suspect in a bigger charge yeah. like murder. Sometimes they will, you know, perhaps withholding like information, withholding information yeah. or something else like that. And they will use that literally perhaps to keep that suspect in custody while the wheels of justice, the churning of that larger file to the DPP on a, on a murder charge will yeah. exist. But look, perhaps we're jumping the gun here and perhaps these remains will... Um, you know, turn out A, not to be human or B, to be, uh, you know, yeah, exactly. a, a, a separate case. But for the moment, it's certainly looking as yeah. if this is a major breakthrough I'm in this case. And um, as we said, given that they're working on intelligence around the suspected murder of Tina Satchwell and this discovery has been made in the location which the intelligence Linked. Led them to, yeah. yeah, exactly. So, I mean, look, it'll it, the next 48 hours, because obviously somebody gets held for 24 hours, but they get to sleep and they get to, yeah. you know, to eat and get breaks and all that. So it stretches it on. So you will have uh, developments, I think, yeah. one way or the other tomorrow. Yeah, well, what we'll do is we'll come back to it tomorrow and we'll yeah. see where we're at. Great stuff. All right. Thanks, Niall. Thanks, Nicola.